Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, we will do a software comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus or S8 versus the OnePlus 5. So basically, we will dive in and see what kind of software features either phone offers. They both run the latest version of Android, and OnePlus 5 is certainly the more lightweight offering with a closer to pure Android experience. While the Galaxy S8 Plus has Samsung's TouchWiz overlay atop Android with added software functionality. So let's start off by looking at the home screen and home screen customization features. Then we'll look at quick toggles under notifications panel and some other settings under settings. All right, so let's start off with the home screen. So I'm gonna press and hold on each of one of these screens and that's gonna bring up the customization options available for the home screens, which usually is the same. So we have wallpapers on this one, widgets and settings. Over here on this guy, we have wallpapers and themes, widgets and home screen settings. So let's just tap on wallpapers really quick to see how that works. If I tap on this, uh, this is the lock screen and this is the home screen. And what I can do is I can scroll down here, oops, and I can pick a different home screen wallpaper. And if I wanna go and change the lock screen wallpaper, I go, I swipe over and I just choose one of these guys, okay? So this one works pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And you don't have to click apply anywhere, but when you exit, it's gonna start the application process and then you're gonna have the new uh, wallpapers. Now on the Samsung Galaxy S8, it's a little bit more than just changing the wallpaper. So when I tap on this uh, button here that says wallpapers and themes, it's going to take me into the Samsung theme store. On the top, it says my wallpapers. And at the bottom here, as you can see, we're in the wallpapers tab. So I can actually scroll through and pick any wallpaper I want from the Samsung themes store. I can sort them by top, by new, whatever, right? And again, if I uh, scroll down a little bit, it gives me access to my wallpapers from where I can also choose and apply any wallpaper that I please. And let me just show you how it works. So if I tap on this guy here and I say home screen, it's gonna show me a preview of what that's gonna look like. And then I can click set as wallpaper and I can also add the motion effect if I so desire. I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, but the other thing is if you go over here, you actually have the themes store. From the theme stores, you can uh, download themes that will change the entire look and feel of your Samsung Galaxy S8. Now the OnePlus 5 as of now does not have a built-in theme store, but you can go and you can download a third-party app that allows you that functionality. So let me show you a quick example. So let's scroll through the themes that I have available. Let, let's tap on this one here. And let's say I want my Galaxy S8 to look like this. All I do is download the theme that I like. Again, you have the store here, so you can go through all these things and download any one that you want. But once you have them downloaded, you go up here, you tap on this, uh, you click apply, and that's gonna change the entire view of the uh, Samsung Galaxy S8. Let's see how that's gonna look like. All right, so that is a new theme that you can apply to your Samsung Galaxy S8. Let's clear these up. And as you can see, everything across the board has changed colors. Even if you go into the settings, it's gonna look all different, okay? So that's the beauty of the Samsung Galaxy S8 theme store. Uh, that the OnePlus 5 doesn't have right now, but you can, like I said, get third-party apps to get this done. But it's much more convenient to actually have it built into the phone. Now, let me go back and pick the regular uh, theme really quick. So if you go back here, go to the themes, uh, what you can do is you tap on this, and that's gonna give me the standard theme for the Samsung Galaxy S8 when you purchase the phone. And of course, if I go back in there, I'm gonna show you one more thing. You can actually download icon packs uh, from here, from the store again, you can download any icon pack and you can apply it to your icons or you can individually download always on displays. The always on display is a display that actually stays on uh, even after the phone is turned off. So let me just uh, find an example here. So for example, uh, when you turn off your phone, it actually shows this screen to you, giving you uh, the clock and some notifications and the battery status and stuff like that. So always on display is an option that you have on the Samsung Galaxy S8, but not on the OnePlus 5. Plus you can go to the theme store and download all these different uh, animations. All right, so let's get out of here. That's the themes and wallpaper engine. Let's take a look at the widgets, how it's, um, the widget, any, anybody can get any widget on any phone, Android phone, so that's not a big deal. So if you tap widgets, this is the screen you see on this guy. So just pick the widget you want and just drop it on the home screen on the Samsung Galaxy S8. It's a little bit different, but it's right here, okay? So that's the widgets. Let's go back. And then if you go to the settings on each phone, this gives you 
the customization for the home screen. Now if you look at the bottom here, it says icon pack. So if I tap this, I am actually able to change icons, but right now I only have uh, a couple different options. I'm not sure if you can go download more yet. If you do know that answer, you can drop a comment down below to let us know. Uh, but right now you can change the icons, but you only have three options on the Samsung Galaxy S8. You had a lot more options than just these three. Now let me go back out. All right, so if you look over here, you have a bunch of options here and a bunch of options there. Uh, with this one, you can access the shelf. The shelf is a really nice thing. On the side screen, you get access to a widget screen. So this is a side widget panel. And in here, you can add any widget that you please. Okay, it comes with some pre-installed widgets. But if I click plus, I can access the widget screen. And I can actually put the same widgets uh, that I could put on a home screen. And of course, Samsung has its own version of a side screen called Bixby. I'm sure a lot of you guys heard about that. Now, Bixby is more than just a side screen, but right now it really isn't any more than that because we haven't gotten the update to get us the full Bixby access. But if I scroll over, here we have the Bixby. And again, uh, with Bixby as well, you can go in here and you can access all these widgets. You can tap these icons here. You can uh, add or unadd other things. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Bixby side screen. I do want to see the full potential of Bixby, but I like the shelf over here better. It's much smoother. Uh, it just goes straight in and you go up and down. Just add the widgets you like. Bixby is a little more customizable, but it seems to be a little more uh, bloated as opposed to the OnePlus 5. So that's nice. That's the shelf. Let me go back in there really quick uh, to the settings. So that's the shelf. Then we got the swipe down feature. So basically, if you swipe down anywhere on the screen, it gives you access to the quick toggles uh, on the Samsung Galaxy Note. That doesn't happen. When you do a swipe down, it takes you into your app screen. With this one, you have to pull up and it goes to your app screen, okay? Let me go back into settings really quick. Just talk about a couple more things. I cannot go over every single thing, but I just want to give you guys an idea of what to expect. So you have a couple more options here. On the Galaxy S8, you have a bunch of other options. You can change the home screen grid and app screen grid. So you can show more apps or less apps in the app um, uh, drawer. So if I go like this, it's going to be more apps. If I go like, I mean, less apps. If I tap this, you're going to have even more apps. Let me just cancel that for now. And other things we have, we can hide the apps. Uh, we can enable or disable the apps button. If I tap this, right now it is enabled. So if I go out, I have an apps button that I can tap. You don't really need that because you can do this. So what you could do is you can go back in here to the settings, uh, go to apps button and simply say hide apps button, click apply and boom, that button is in fact gone. All right. And of course, the OnePlus 5 does not have a button, so you can just go like that, which is very convenient. So next up, let's take a look at the notifications panel. So if you pull this thing down, you get access to quick toggles. And if you pull it down one more time, you get access to full uh, quick toggles. The same thing with the Samsung Galaxy. So there's the quick toggles. And then if you pull it down one more time, you get access to everything. Both of these guys have a brightness slider right over here. Uh, on the Samsung Galaxy S8, you can actually tap this arrow and you can actually modify the brightness slider from there. You can actually get even more options, okay? So let's click done. It takes you back. And one more thing I'm going to look over here is uh, here's the Wi-Fi right here. Uh, if I tap on the Wi-Fi, it goes into even more options, okay? So from here, I can select the Wi-Fi that I want and then click done. It takes me back into the uh, notifications panel. The same is also available on this one, but it works a little bit different. If I tap on the actual button, it turns on and off. So it actually works like a real quick toggle. But if I tap on the text, then it takes me into the additional options. So that's the way it works on the Samsung Galaxy S8. So for example, again, uh, where's the Bluetooth? If you tap this, it's going to go into the Bluetooth. You can turn that on and off. Okay, so that's off. Over here, I can just tap it and it's going to turn off. But if I want to go into the details, I can tap the text and that it, then it takes me into the full uh, detailed settings. And in either phone, you can press and hold any one of these options. For example, if I press and hold this thing, it goes into the full settings. Same thing with the Samsung Galaxy S8 if I tap and hold it goes into the full settings, all right? So that's the notifications panel, and the notifications panels are customizable on both phones. So with this one, all you do is you tap on this pen icon, which allows you to edit the notifications panel. 
If you don't want something, you grab it, just put it down to deactivate. All right, now you only have access to these guys. With the Samsung Galaxy S8, you can tap it, and you can all you can do is you can say a uh, button order. And again, if you don't want something, you grab it, and you can just drag it here, and that gets deactivated. And on top of that, you can change the grid. So button grid. So it can go three by three. So you're gonna have three this way, three that way, four by three, or five by three. Okay. Again, not a big deal, but the S8 does have more functionality here. This is not as big as the theme store, so I'm just going to skip that. Let's go and take a look at the settings screen, how they look. All right, so let's pull down, go to settings, and pull this down, and go to settings as well. So as you can see, the Samsung Galaxy S8, at least to me, looks more refined. If you disagree, just drop a comment and tell me that you like this one better. It's really a personal preference, okay? And again, you have uh, settings here. They're really nice. Uh, on the OnePlus 5, I like the way they have it um, ordered. So it says wireless and networks customization. So you can do a lot of customization on the OnePlus 5. Not as much as on the uh, Galaxy S8, but you do have these nice options. For example, I can go over here to status bar, and I can, in fact, uh, modify what I want to see up in the status bar here. So if I don't want the, uh, for example, the um, that download speed or the clock, I can disable those things, right? So all I do is uh, tap this. So Wi-Fi is gone, Ethernet is gone, and if I go back here, I can also uh, hide the network speed. But the point is that you can this you you using this option, you can enable or disable things up on the status bar. Uh, the S8 does not have that option. So let's go back here. You can also modify buttons, gestures, and you can uh, modify the alert slider button over here. And uh, other than that, you know, it looks nice. It's very well organized, but this is more aesthetically pleasing, as you can tell. And uh, it does have things that the OnePlus does not have. For example, if I go to device maintenance, you have a full suite of software functions that actually allow you to manage your battery, your performance, your storage, and your memory. Okay, so for example, if I go to the performance mode, it allows me to pick between game, entertainment, high performance, and all that good stuff. And just to give an example, if I tap on game and I click apply, it's going to modify the phone so it actually gives uh, a performance boost to games. All right, it tells you exactly what, I, what it did. So let's go back here. So that's the device maintenance. Now I'm not going to be able to go into every little setting and show you everything. I do have videos on, on, on these things going into details about every single setting. I'll drop links to those videos down below so you can go check them out. Uh, I have a full video on this customization stuff here and I have a full video on the S8 that goes just about, um, it goes over every single thing in the phone. Let's just quickly go into display here. You can go to display and you can see that we have a lot of settings on this guy, but we have more settings in the Samsung Galaxy S8, all right? We have things like you can change the resolution of the screen if you wanted to. Right now we're in the game mode, so it's not gonna allow me to do that. Uh, but if I scroll down, uh, we have a couple options. We can play with the icons if we want. We can run them up. Uh, we can uh, play with the navigation bar. So there's a navigation bar at the bottom here. I can change the color, as you can see. All right, and we have other things like, if I tap on the status bar, it doesn't give me all the detailed options, but you can change a couple things here, okay? With this one here, you have the, um, the night mode, the reading mode. You can do the screen calibration. And if I scroll down here, Again, you can change the display size, the font size. This is not the resolution, by the way, just the display size, okay? With the S8, you can change the resolution of the phone, but we also have a blue light filter here, and we have screen modes you can pick from. So you can, if you're watching a movie, you can go to cinema. If you're looking at photos, you can choose the photo, or you can choose adaptive display that changes by itself, all right? So that's the settings over here. So let's go back to the home screen and like I said, unfortunately, I cannot go into the full details, but I just want to give you guys a quick overview of how these phones uh, look and feel as far as software functionality goes. Now, they're both Android, and they are both fully customizable and personalizable. Uh, the things you can do on the S8, such as changing your theme, can be done on this guy as well, but you have to download a third party. On top of that, it's not going to be as good as a built-in theme engine. 
And then anyway, if I go to the phone, for example, that's the phone dialer for this guy. And we have a phone dialer for the Samsung Galaxy S8. This is a little more uh, plain, that's a little more advanced, but not a big deal. Not advanced, it just looks a little more uh, uh, bloated there. This is more materialized design. Like I said, this is closer to pure Android than the S8. S8 always have a skin on it. The Samsung, Samsung loves to put uh, the touch was overlay a top Android to make it more fancy and more cool. But I gotta tell you, it looks pretty neat, okay? This one, to me, looks better than this one. This one is just too plain for me, and this is, while not too bloated, is kinda pretty. So let's go back out. Now the other thing the Samsung Galaxy S8 has that the uh, OnePlus 5 is not gonna have, as you know, it comes with curved edges, so you get access to this edge screen. An edge screen gives you all these uh, crazy functions, such as you can have a calculator on the, on the side, uh, you can have quick tools on the side, you know, the flashlight, you can turn that on if you wanted to, change the intensity and everything, uh, turn it off. You have a ruler, you have a compass that needs to be calibrated right now, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, scroll over, you can access the weather, you can access uh, the device maintenance, you know, the battery, the performance mode, the storage. And that's how, what it looks like. And if you scroll again, again, more weather panels, stocks, all this good stuff. And if you click settings, it can actually go in and you can add more panels. You can even go to the store and download many more panels and you can have them all on the side. Again, something that the OnePlus 5 does not have as far as software functionality is concerned. Now, I do want to make a quick mention of the... Um, uh, the performance on these phones. So the OnePlus 5 and the Samsung Galaxy S8 have the same processor. The OnePlus 5, the one that I have, has 8 gigs of RAM. This one has 4 gigs of RAM. Uh, overall performance on the OnePlus 5 is better. And I'm not saying that the Samsung Galaxy S8 is a laggy phone. As you can see, we don't see much lag here. It's very quick, very um, snappy, as you can see, just like this guy. But the thing is, every now and then, when there's a lot of activity in the background on the Samsung Galaxy S8, you may notice a lag. And if I was to put a number on it, I would say it's between uh, 2 to 5% of the total experience. So it's not that bad, okay? But I have yet to experience the OnePlus 5 lag at all. And I've been using this uh, for, a, for a couple days, and I'm using it heavily just so I can actually catch a lag, but I have not been able to do so. Obviously, the Samsung Galaxy S8 has a touchless overlay, and that overlay does add a lot of functionality to the S8 that you cannot find on the uh, OnePlus 5, but with all those functionality, there comes a slight performance drop. But do not blow this out of proportion. Uh, just listen to what I'm saying very carefully. If this is 100% smooth and soft, uh, this is 97% smooth and soft, uh, silky. So it's not a big deal, all right? but you will notice occasional lag on the S8 or the S8 Plus, OnePlus 5. Uh, so far, I have not seen it. If you have seen it yourself, you can let me know in the comments below. And that brings us to the end of the video. Just drop your comments, concerns, and personal observations in the comments down below about the OnePlus 5 and the S8 Plus or the S8. Make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech and give this software interface comparison video a thumbs up. And do not forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Saki Tech Online. Have a great day.